All right. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's one o'clock, February 1st. Happy first of the month. Um, and we are here on a regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. Um, let's see, do I have, I'll pull up the agenda here. And uh, can I get approval of our uh, today's agenda? I will make a motion that we approve the agenda. Second. Great, any further discussion on that? No, thank you. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 All right, and I will put that in the chat there. Uh, okay. Great, thank you. Yeah, all right, and for community informational items, Commissioner Marcella, do you have anything for us today? Yes, ma'am. Um, thanks for asking. So I uh, just wanted to address quickly and briefly that um, there is a, a political cartoon in the Herald Democrat this week that talks about the budget being in deficit by $1.45 million. Um, and just wanted to make sure that um, the public is, is aware that First of all, the county is not broke um, and that the county is managing its finances well and that the, um, the representation in the paper is that, um, you know, there is that deficit and that is representative of the estimated expenditures being in excess of revenues. However, um, just wanted to remind folks that, you know, this the, the way that Colorado budget law allows us to operate is to pull money from those, those fund balances um, and save in those fund balances for, for special projects. And so the bulk of um, the expenditures over revenues that is represented there uh, is, is in large part from the road and bridge fund for nine, roughly $950,000. And so that's because, you know, like when you're purchasing a vehicle and you put money in a savings account to pay for that vehicle, um, eventually you take that money out of the savings account and buy it. And so that's what we've done to upgrade our fleet, um, our ever aging fleet so that we can have better long-term return on investment there. Um, and not all of those funds uh, have revenues that are inclusive of property tax. Um, Road and Bridge Fund doesn't have any property tax included in there. And so um, it's Highway Users Fund. And so I just, just wanted to make people aware that, um, you know, our, our budgeting process takes into account our long-term goals and objectives. And, um, and that's what we're working towards. And I would encourage everyone to take part in that budgeting process and uh, help us build a budget document that is truly representative of our community. And so if, if you have any questions or comments, please reach out to our finance department and I'm sure they'd be happy to guide you on that. Thanks, Commissioner Marcella. That's a great point. Commissioner Fiedler, do you have any community updates for us? Yeah, maybe just one one thing quick to say. Um, I think there, there's been some attention on the uh, proposed uh, reopening of the Tennessee Pass line. Um, and that that company, um, whose acronym I am spacing on at the moment, um, but we'll, we'll come back to, um, there, there's an item on the agenda, but I also wanted to just let um, everyone here know and, and for the community update that the community liaison or outreach lead uh, for the rail line was in town Friday afternoon. And I met with her just very informally um, to show her some of the railroad crossings in the county um, and just, you know, orient her to what things actually look like on the ground rather than on a map or a piece of paper. Um, so again, a very informal meeting and you know, that, that there is no urgent decision or, you know, formal input. Um, we're just at the very early stages of, um, you know, to uh, discuss ourselves, what our, um, you know, interests are, um, and uh, I'll be working, um, you know, with, with, with fellow county commissioners to just get input from all our departments, you know, the community from uh, different organizations in, in the county and also work with our neighboring co uh, counties to, you know, get all that input and, you know, uh, feedback, raise concerns, um, 
uh, with the railroad community liaison. But I just wanted to let people know that meeting happened and that we're, you know, we're beginning to interface with that. But again, no, you know, no urgent decisions for sure. This is going to be a multi-year uh, process um, for, uh, you know, anything that happens on the rail line. But um, yes, let folks know. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I just like to try to be consistent in, in uh, delivering word from the Division of Water Resources. The letters are continuing to go out for those that have been identified um, by the division of having illegal pond structures. And so those are actually, they started to be sent out January 14th of this year, and they will continue to be sent out over the coming few weeks. Um, and the intention of the division is to start compliance uh, with those uh, uh, for for augmentation of those pond structures um, in the area in the basin, um, starting from Salida and working up north to the headwaters to Lake County. So again, it'll be a number or a matter of time, um, probably um, at least a, a couple of years, if not more, um, uh, before the division gets to Lake County. And so um, I hope that folks we will have the uh, the plan is to have the Lake County augmentation plan ready to accept applications um, by the end of this year. And uh, so we can start, um, you know, receiving applications, um, both potentially for augmentation uh, to meet compliance with the division on that issue, um, but also for other residential, commercial and environmental um, um, needs in the county. And with that, uh, are there any commissioner clarifications? I do not have any. Uh, none for me, thank you. Great, Commissioner. None for me, thank you. Okay, all right. And at this time, uh, we are at our public comments on items not in the agenda. I'll remind everyone to um, sign up for public comment through the chat function of the Zoom meeting. Um, public comments are limited to three minutes and requested to remain respectful. Please contact the clerk should you need assistance or accommodations prior to the meeting um, in the future to submit public comment um, and or submit any public comment to uh, the commissioners and the clerk um, with a request to read into any of our meeting public comments. Um, I believe I see Jamie Cipher would like to make a public comment. Go ahead, Jamie. Thank you, Commissioner Mudge. Uh, I would like to say happy February to everybody. Uh, hopefully we get a little bit more snow here. Um, and mostly I am commenting to echo my comment from a couple weeks ago, which is that it's still difficult as a citizen to get accurate information about VOCC happenings. Um, the county website is still looks terrible on mobile. And I've signed up for as many email um, notifications as I think I can find. They all just have a link to another thing in them. I get email updates. Um, I'm not a technology wizard, but I think it's kind of easy to make a dynamic mobile friendly website. I think it's easy to include dynamic content in emails that are going out. And I think it's a very easy and simple, straightforward time saving thing to put, for example, the weekly planner or the meeting agenda just in the body of the email. So you're not clicking and linking everywhere else. So again, I would just like to remind council that as uh, one dude trying to engage, that would be a helpful thing that I think is easy. So uh, thanks for your hard work. And uh, I appreciate you letting me speak today. Thanks, Jamie. Um, uh, taking your comment from the other week, uh, I have contacted Civic Plus and so we are, um, Exploring options to continue improvements there, but thanks for your feedback on that. Um, and I see Colleen Nielsen is going to give us an update on COVID-19. Go ahead, Colleen, take it away. Hey guys, how's it going today? Thank you so much. And I will be as brief as possible. So we continue to work on vaccinating folks. The governor on Friday updated what the vaccine phases look like. So an update came out on January 29th on Friday. Those new phases go into effect on February 8th. With that being said, the way they um, we've been talking about it, if you remember, is above the dotted line, below the dotted line. There is no dotted line anymore. 
I'm more than happy to show the updated phases on my screen if I can get permission to do that. Thank you. So if you remember, we had um, a phase one, one A, one B, phase two and phase three. So now in phase one, we now have a B.1, which is what we're currently working on, our 70 and up and healthcare workers. We will be moving into the B.2 phase, which is 65 and up and focusing on educators in pre-K through 12. If you fall into that category as far as being part of an educational institution, the school district, and we ask that you reach out to your administrators to find out what that plan is. We are working with all of the administrators from the different entities to ensure that we can figure out how to get vaccine to our educators. Rocky Mountain Family Practice and St. Vincent Health will begin vaccinating the 65 and up population. So currently they are doing the 70 and up. They are going to extend that to include 65 and up starting on February 8th. As in anything that we're doing, it really depends on the vaccine that is being allocated to our county. Currently, we get anywhere from 100 to 200 doses a week. When we look at the numbers in our 65 and up population alone, we know that that is over 500 folks. And that is looking at a couple of different resources and nothing is 100%. So when you think about receiving one to 200 doses, that's gonna take us a couple of weeks. On top of that, we have educators and having reached out to administrators that might qualify under that area, you know, we're looking at another, you know, 300 to 400 doses. So this phase is going to take us, you know, a couple of weeks. We continue to do second doses for both our first responders and both Rocky Mountain Family Practice and St. Vincent Health will be moving into their second doses for our 70 and up population, which is exciting in the sense of really feeling confident that we are vaccinating our most vulnerable and then opening it up on February 8th to 65 and up and educators. Once again, 65 and up, reach out to St. Vincent Health or Rocky Mountain Family Practice. If you are part of an education program, school district, please reach out to your administrators because public health is working directly with them to figure out the best way that we can vaccinate depending on what we have as far as um, allocation. Any questions on that? I don't think I have anything, Colleen. Commissioner Fiedler or Commissioner Marcella? Um, no, I don't think I ha necessarily have any questions. Um, just want to say thank you to Colleen. I know that this information came down pretty fast and furious on Friday and Saturday. Um, and so thank you for, for being on top of it. Um, in, in speaking about vaccine allocation, um, there was a pretty robust conversation about that last week at CCI on Friday. Um, there still is not any information about the allocation formula or anything like that. And so um, we're just rolling with the punches. Just wanted to put that out there that we, we really are doing the best that we can and advocating for what we can, but we're just rolling with the punches. Yeah, I can appreciate that, Kayla. There, the latest we heard is that they are gonna finalize that. They're going to population-based. As I said in the beginning, we still don't know what those numbers look like. The state is still trying to figure out if they can get, usually we're about four days ahead of what's coming, um, which is a very hard way to stay proactive versus reactive. So we'll continue to do what we need to do. Like I said, roll with the punches and keep going. I think the next piece that I want to talk about that you know that we are currently in orange on the dial. The state also <laughs> this past weekend is looking to update that dial. What's great about a county like ours, it gives us a little bit more flexibility to kind of move between phases. So that works in our favor for moving up and up in the dial, right? Going from, you know, orange where we've been since November into yellow, which would be a little bit less restrictive. But it also means that we're just as susceptible to move the opposite way on the dial. The good news is the, uh, the state recognizes that they are opening up a process. We do not know what that looks like for counties that have a population of 20,000 or less to really have that technical support, have those conversations in the sense of instead of just moving, because one of the way they've changed how they're looking at it 
is we had to be, they were looking at a two week window for the data to see where we might fit. Now they're shortening that window to one week. And as you can imagine here, we could have like we did last week, 13 cases in one day, which would push us you know, over the edge. And so we're thankful that they're uh, getting a process in place that we can have those bigger conversations instead of an automatic, you've got to go you know, into a more restrictive and or you know, less restrictive depending on the week. So I think that's exciting. The other point that I want to just share, and I apologize, I know I'm over three minutes and hopefully you guys will forgive me, is when we're pulling numbers, so we're looking at updating the um, emergency declaration, making sure that it's appropriate, and in conjunction that we know that some public health orders will be coming out from the state and we'll have to figure out what that means for us locally and what changes we need to adapt or adopt is the right word. When we looked at our numbers, so between March, when we had our first reported case to September 30th, we had just crested the 100 mark. Since September 30th till yesterday, we are at 543 cases. So when you think about that, <laughs> um, as much as we've been doing really great work and people are following those, um, you know, mask wearing, social distancing, six feet apart, staying away from folks when you're sick, not gathering large households, we're not doing so great um, in the scheme of it all. When you think of how our numbers have quadrupled in, you know, a couple of months versus, you know, through the summer, obviously there's a lot of factors that play into that. People go indoors. We know that's, you know, indoors is worse than outdoors and there's so many different factors, but I just want to reiterate that we are not out of it just because there's a vaccine in place as you guys can all attest to, it is, it is a very slow rollout. So we need people to get a little bit more vigilant, especially now if we have opportunity to move quicker into a more, you know, less restrictive environment and or more restrictive environment, depending on our numbers. So I would just like to have folks repledge to doing their part in making sure that you're wearing masks and not gathering um, in groups, you know, outside of your household and you're just really mindful of that. And so um, that's really all I wanted to share today. Like seeing those numbers really hit me hard. Granted, I know that there's, uh, like I said, there's a lot of factors involved, but also so much of this comes down to what you're doing, you know, personal responsibility, behaviors, things like that. And um, yeah, and I want to, I want to move just as much as the next person, but if we keep having large numbers, like we're going to be in this for a while and we've, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I have more to say and now I just lost my whole <laughs> train of thought. Be like, come on, everybody. Yeah, no, no, it's important. It's important. I think, I think a couple of things too, Colleen, and maybe, um, I mean, happy to take the time. I think my fellow commissioners agree. This is an incredibly important update and we can have you on every agenda as the first item if you have availability to, to give us updates. But uh, um, something that I think is very compelling and helpful to understand is that rollout of the vaccines, um, you know, everyone needs to be scheduled for their first and as the you know we don't we don't get twice as many sent to us and distributed to us to 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 hit those second doses then um so i, I it's a it's a two steps forward one step back bit of a process um and i think that's helpful for people to understand too that that's part of the cycle of going through um the vaccinations in lake county um but no um even if you get your vaccine, you need to continue wearing your masks. <laughs> um, very important, you know. I mean, I know that that there's it's it's start it. Yeah, we're not we're not. I, I don't think we're anywhere near you know having having anyone feel the comfort and public health letting up to to not have mask wearing at all. So that's people need to keep that in mind for sure. Okay. Sarah, I did want to also add that the the dial conversation is up for public comment. Does it close tonight, Colleen? Uh, it closes today at five p.m. Yeah. So if if the public goes to um, the Colorado Department of Public Health website, um, they've got they've got a section on there for public comments to be submitted about the dial, the new dial proposal, um, and public comments will be accepted tonight until five p.m. Um, you know, they they sent out. A meeting invitation Saturday morning for for us to discuss this um, at CCAT, and uh, so it was kind of a kind of a crunch, but um, but it is out there. So if there's any kind of public comment that anybody would like to leave with Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment, that's out there. 
um, for them to do that today until five. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Marissa. Yep, I'll find that link and I'll drop it in the chat. I just need a minute to kind of find it and I, and I will put that in the chat for folks. Excellent, thank you. And Commissioner Marcel also put in a, in the chat uh, www.cocovidvaccine.com for updates on um, vaccination strategy and information. And then we do have that updated graphic on our lakecountyoem.org page as well and telling you exactly what I just shared. Yeah, excellent. Thank Great. you, Colleen. All right, any other public comment? I don't see anybody else in the chat. I'm sorry, Sarah, can I, I forgot to uh, include something in, in uh, my informational up, updates. Can I add something Absolutely. here? Absolutely, please, yep. Okay, yeah, um, I just wanted to uh, to make, make folks aware um, that at CCI, they did have a conversation with the Director of Natural Resources last week about wolf reintroduction um, into the state of Colorado. And so that is still very much in the preliminary stages. Um, and the plan is for them to put together a task force um, representative of county commissioners um, so that we can on a local level be very involved intimately in that role um, and whatever that might look like. So um, I know that there's some some concerns that come with um, with that reintroduction and, and um, the priority is obviously to do it right. So um, they, they will be reaching out to counties and um, holding more update meetings as we go through that process um, so that everyone stays very well informed and uh, we can relay that information as we receive it from CCI. All right, thank you very much. Anybody else for public comment? Again, I don't see any other requests in the chat. If not, I will move into our first item of business, with is, which is with the South Central Economic Development District, or SCED, an update and information for recovery efforts. And I see we have Michael here and Marla from our Economic Development Corporation. Um, unless Commissioner Marcella has another intro for us to tee this up, um, which it looks like she may, unmuting. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Great. thanks so much, Thanks, Sarah. Take it. Sure, um, so our uh, Southern uh, Economic Development Corporation um, is linked to us so that we kind of open those gates for federal funding. And so Michael, um, is making a presentation to us about what to expect going into 2021 um, and and answer any questions that we might have about uh, redeveloping our five-year goals that we have for economic development. So Michael, I'm gonna let you take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate the commissioners fitting me in. Uh, I know you are very busy right now, uh, especially getting that COVID update today from um, Colleen, I can appreciate uh, how busy of a time it is, uh, but we are in the midst of doing the five-year comprehensive economic development strategy update. Um, if there's a way to allow me to share my screen, I got a quick presentation. I promise to keep it quick. Um, you I'm should. Busy. Yep, uh, Michael, yep. you should be able to below um, if for some reason. There you go. There it is. All right. Um, so yeah, so we are the Southern Colorado Economic Development District. Um, we've actually been in existence since 1968. Uh, Lake County is one of the 13 member counties um, in our region. We really rear our heads every five years um, when we do this comprehensive uh, economic development strategy, which I'll get into here in just a minute. Um, but just a real quick background, a little bit more of what, um, what your economic development district is. In, in 1965, the um, Congress passed an act that established economic development districts, um, and with the core being uh, the fact that we prepare uh, an economic development strategy for these county regions. They exist across the entire United States, um, so this is not something that's unique to Colorado, and this is the federal, um, the feds basically guideline to uh, just dispersal and redistribution of federal funds, not just on the economic levels, but what, we, what we'll get into is disaster recovery, which COVID certainly falls into. 
Um, beyond the comprehensive economic development strategy, uh, we are your uh, conduit to the EDA. Um, so EDA grants and EDA programs. Uh, we do provide on a, um, and what we're finding as we continue to expand our organization is that there is a need in our rural communities for uh, planning technical assistance and grant writing. And then finally, we do administer the opportunity zones, which Lake County has one um, out by the airport. Uh, and so I've been uh, speaking with Marla about projects and incentives out there. Um, and when we do get a project uh, proposal, the um, working side by side with Marla um, and the local EDs, we are the conduit again to access those tax credits and such that go with into the Opportunity Zone. Um, we recently um, have had a breath, breath of fresh new staff. I will admit one of the um, downfalls of SCED in the last few years, as we have seen kind of a turnover, uh, multiple turnovers in our executive um, director position. And we had a relatively small staff of one uh, for a couple of years that was trying to cover a 13 county region. We are back up to full strength and running. We now have uh, three additional disaster recovery planners that are funded through the CARES Act. Um, so I am your uh, the, um, disaster uh, planner. Uh, Brent is out in the Eastern Plains. Bob is down south in Los Animas and Warpano. Um, and I have recently come um, via, I used to be the prior Com Dev Director for uh, the town of Crested Butte, formerly also the city of Salida Com Dev Director previous to that. I had a stint as a town planner in Buena Vista. Uh, so I've served in local government for well over 12 years um, as, a, as a planner. And so I can fully understand the needs uh, that Lake County would have um, as it relates at the local level. So I'm not a, I, I just wanna impress upon the commissioners that I'm not a federal um, employee that came out of um, the red tape blanket. So I'm, I'm definitely here at the local level trying to help um, and I'm currently completing my uh, Master's of Public Administration um, at the University of Colorado. Uh, so I'm hoping to wrap that up soon. So that's my little bit about me. Um, again, our uh, services that we do um, provide, again, are the Comprehensive Economic Strategy Update, Planning Technical Assistance. Uh, we did just recently start the Community Profile Preparation. So if you were to go to sked.com, click on Regions, um, the Lake County Community Profile has been updated. Um, and that's just a brief snapshot of um, from our, some of our economic development software that we used in the creation of the set SEDs. So I would encourage uh, it's it's a it's worth a look. And then that will be updated again. The big the big piece of data that's still needed is the census data um, that should be coming out later this year. Um, we do offer grant preparation. Um, and then the other big one that we have seen and that we are working closely with the state is broadband planning and implementation. Uh, the federal government is great with COVID. We've all realized the need for broadband um, and it's becoming an essential utility. Um, right now, it's not under the PUC, but there are talks at the state level about how to um, regionalize the efforts. Uh, and we have seen that we are uniquely positioned to be a leader in the broadband discussion. So hopefully we'll, we'll see what, the, what, what comes out of all the discussions um, but there's a good chance that you'll be seeing a lot more of SCED um, as it relates to broadband. Um, we do offer attainable housing capacity. I'm, for example, working in Custer County uh, on a development proposal for 12 lots for home ownership and business rentals um, down there and assisting with RFPs and development proposals. Um, we do help with COVID relief efforts, but I will say I've been very impressed by your public health um, initiatives and everything the commissioners are doing. We have some communities where there's been um, far less of that effort. So again, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're just trying to help where needed. Um, we do, uh, the other big one that we're looking at is uh, the SBA uh, 504 loans um, and revitalizing that and getting that back into the Pueblo office and being based out of Pueblo instead of Colorado Springs. Um, and so we do realize some underwriting fees from that. Um, so how are we funded? We are funded by county membership dues. Um, so each of our 13 counties pay into that. Um, we are also funded through EDA grants for planning technical assistance. And for instance, the CARES Act uh, pumped $400,000 in our organization to uh, hire the three disaster planners that we discussed earlier. 
Um, we are expanding the fee for service for local governments. And what's critical about that is we're not trying to be the full scale consultant firm. What we are seeing is there is a niche need for our, our rural communities um, for either grant writing, RFP preparation, um, some planning technical assistance on potentially a zoning ordinance. Um, we've seen attainable housing requests uh, as far as setting guidelines, looking at heat restrictions, uh, those types of things that are a full scale need uh, master plan comp plan type thing. Uh, and we offer uh, a highly discounted fee for our time for service um, because you guys are a member. So uh, I would, you know, encourage any of your uh, staff or the commissioners, if you have a planning technical assistance that comes up, we certainly can help. And then again, there's a base amount of hours that we offer for free uh, just to answer the phone and try to provide technical assistance. Uh, as, as you're part of your membership dues. On, um, so we're, we're trying to be a resource as best we can. Um, but when we get in the, you know, I'm doing a master plan for uh, Kiowa County for uh, some GOCO funding and some state trails funding. Those kind of things are where we start to, when we, when we start to get into the multiple hours, um, 10 plus hours, that's when we start to do a fee for service. We are your conduit to uh, these other organizations within the state beyond the feds. So DOLA, GOCO, OEDIT, um, USDA, Chaffa, we've been working with all of these groups. Um, we're, for instance, with the USDA, we're assisting, we assist with uh, their, their um, development loans programs, writing grants for those. Um, you know, we, we do have members of Chaffa on our, on the board of SCED. Um, this SBDC is a perfect example. Um, we were lobbying the SBDC when the Rural Grant and, um, Theater Initiative came out uh, and originally it didn't include places like the steam plant and uh, the Tabor Opera House. And we were successfully able to lobby SBDC to include those. And I do believe the Opera House did, uh, the Tabor Opera House did receive funding. So that's a good example of how we are constantly plugged into these organizations, attending the meetings uh, when these grant fundings are coming out and trying to lobby for our local governments. Um, and obviously we work with Marla at the local EDC. So real quick, what is the SEDS? This is where we're kicking off today. Um, I, I basically like to explain it as it's a prioritized list of economic projects, policies, and programs. And I will be working with the commissioners, Marla, and the city of uh, Leadville to identify those projects. And it goes beyond just the local governments. Um, you know, we do uh, know that you guys have a bunch of special districts up there, ambulance, um, Parkville Utilities, the school district, the hospital district, Leadville Sanitation, all of those groups also could put in um, potential project ideas that would be included. Again, the key is to be more inclusive than less because the, when you go for grant funding from the federal government, their first question they'll ask is, is this part of the SEDS or is this part of a planning initiative? Uh, so we wanna be inclusive and in really thinking ahead of what could potentially emerge over the next five years. The second piece is that the SEDS have merged into disaster recovery and resiliency planning, and that's where COVID comes in. So the CARES Act is a great example. Um, I'm sure everyone's aware that the Biden administration is pushing forward with another $1.9 trillion uh, stimulus package. And just looking at that today, the most recent proposal would include $440 billion for local and state governments. And so we are keeping our finger on the pulse of that funding and as it comes out. Um, and again, that's where we have expanded beyond the EDA because a lot of those groups are, um, re get, a lot of the state agencies are getting redistribu redistribution funds from those types of stimuluses. Um, so finally, where we're at and where do we need to get to by September 30th for the adoption of the plan? So I am gonna ask today that the, that the three commissioners please participate in any local businesses in the economic development survey, um, strategy survey. I'll post a link to that in the, um, in the chat box. So it takes about 10 minutes. The goal of that survey is very simple. It's the 30,000 foot North Arrow. As you can see from the list of different counties that we have, Baca County is much different than Lake County. Um, and so we need to have, and we're able to sort by each county's participation in there. You'll see one of the first questions is, which county do you reside? And so when we break out into these, uh, which is number four, these county focus groups in April through June, uh, there'll be two meetings and that survey will help that group uh, discuss the economic strategies and the strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, threats portion of the plan that's mandated by the feds. Um, 
in between now and then, I have been doing discovery by meeting um, with the uh, folks up in Lake County. Um, I've had I've been into the city of Leadville already um, and heard about some of their projects. And as we kind of ramp up into this uh, county discussion this spring, you'll be seeing a lot more of me. Um, the final presentation, and I think this is on your agenda, uh, the board, the 13 counties each have two members and they, the SCED board is the official adopting agency. Um, so that's why it's important today that we renew the two members um, from Lake County uh, because that will be the final vote and insurance of that. There is also a 30 day public notice window that we'll be posting once the draft plan is available. It'll be up on our website and allow for public comments. But really because of COVID and our traditional planning efforts of bringing everyone into a meeting room, we're gonna really be relying on, uh, on representation from the local governments. We'll be asking for one of the commissioners to participate in the community discussions, um, as well as uh, your, your local staffs that have their fingers on the pulse of projects that are needed. Um, with that, I will answer any questions. I'm sorry, I was a little longer winded today. Uh, so I apologize about that. Thanks, Michael. Um, that's exciting to hear uh, that you know there there is more communication and planned um, uh, kind of survey and, and conversations happening in April and June as well. Um, you know, our county. It sounds like you with uh, I think Kiowa County. You said you were working with maybe a master planning regarding some rec tourism and development and. And we are kind of getting some of those same balls rolling on, on looking at uh, how we manage wildfire mitigation along with, you know, not missing an opportunity to, to create efficiencies in co um, convening those land management partners uh, in like rec master planning as we look at that both from an economic um, growth opportunity as well as, uh, you know, a budgetary and, and uh, operation maintenance for facilities and, and protecting um, our county. So I, I'm, I'm very interested in uh, what those conversations will look like in April and June. Thanks for all the information. Um, I don't, I don't have any other questions for you other than, well, do you have a, do you have a current list that we might um, grow from? Um, and or a new list. I don't think we've seen one in a couple of years. Um, or is this something that we're going to develop in those conversations through April and June? That, that's a great question. Uh, we have a very preliminary list that I have developed um, with, uh, with Marla and with the city of Leadville. We certainly want um, input from the county. And so those are, that's that discovery phase. If I, if I jump back to my slide here, that that's really contingent on uh, the staff, myself meeting on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Again, COVID has made the public participation on this in this plan update uh, rather tricky than what, we're, what we would typically be doing. Um, so it, it's going to be a little bit more condensed, um, but Again, the key will be that we will ask a member of the commissioners to be part of that community uh, county task force that's going to develop those plans. Um, and certainly my hope would be that the, the commissioner representative would bring back to the other two commissioners the list of projects that have been identified and that's certainly allowed to be added to. Again, our goal is to be inclusive, not exclusive. So, uh, you know, it's, it's better to put it in there than not have it. Uh, so um, there's there will be some examples of things that aren't really the type of projects that the Fed. You know, these are really large projects typically, um, but we'll we we'd rather hear the idea and embed it than than not hear it at all. Great. Uh, do my fellow commissioners have any uh, questions for Michael? Marla, do you have anything to dovetail in there? <laughs> I just had one quick question. Uh, it's great um, that we're beginning the update of the uh, the strategy. I was wondering. I, I didn't. I was briefly multitasking, and I didn't immediately see the existing one. I, I don't know if it's possible just to. I, I'd love to glance at that just to see sort of what they look like and sort of what's what's in it. Sure. You know, before. Yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be yeah. happy to to provide that. Cool. Thanks. 
I would just add that this is extremely helpful when we start working on federal grants and we need the support from said. Um, and Michael's been up here two or three times and we, we talk quite a bit. So this is this, this discovery period will be very important that we put all of our ideas out there. And one of the things that I know I've shared with the commissioners is really identifying the county land that we the, the county owns and having a, a good understanding and the master plan of what we want on all those properties. So excited about working on this. Thanks, Father. Thanks, and, and I suppose, oh, Commissioner Marcella, do you have a comment? I was gonna just kind of move naturally into a couple of the next agenda items with sure. Skip. Yeah, I just was I just was going to ask Michael if um, he had wanted us to seat those board members then today. That's on our agenda, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we we will be reaching out to the new board members to do an onboarding process. Uh, this is just a unique year because the SEDS is due. Um, I actually have a call with the EDA next week. For the, and they're going to whack me over the back of the head with due dates and and um, I have a quite an extensive list of things I need to have to them and one of which is who's on the board. <laughs> so yeah, well, and so our next two items are the sked dues considerations and then sked board appointments. Um, I, I think I saw in our packet that the dues was twenty five hundred dollars. Um, is that correct, Michael? That is correct. All right, and I think that that's uh, money well spent. Uh, I mean, if for no other reason also than that the state has, you know, invested that 400,000, as you said, to, to kind of uh, increase capacity, which, um, you know, we, we should certainly be prepared and at the table to take advantage of as best we can. Um, so I would be in favor of, of uh, paying late county dues and, and being able to incorporate this into our overall strategic planning. What do my fellow commissioners think about that? Yeah, this is Commissioner Fiedler. I'm, I'm uh, in agreement and ready to, you know, move, move ahead and approve that uh, if, if we all are. I agree. I don't, I don't have any further further questions or anything. I, I think it's a wise investment for us. Yeah. I'd be happy to entertain a motion. Sorry. I will. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Commissioner Fiedler. I move uh, that we approve the dues for the Southern Colorado Economic Development District as included in the packet. I will second that. Okay, any further discussion on the membership dues of SCED for Lake County through 2021? None for me, thank you. None for me. All right, not seeing any or hearing any. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Great, and then as for board appointments for Michael so that we can kind of get coordinated um, and uh, continue participation. Um, I think Kayla has been operating in that role with Marla right now. Um, personally, I'm, I'm curious if Commissioner Fiedler thinks he has capacity to do that as I know Kayla and I have a lot of other projects I'm, I, I'm happy to take it on capacity wise. I was just going to, I mean, my, if I'm reading, if I'm recalling the resolution right, and Kayla's already the lead for coordination with EDC and just from sort of, you, you know, efficiency yeah. there, it seemed like that would fall within that. Again, I'm happy to step into. I, um, I'm definitely help, definitely um, able to, to take that role on now that we've been able to split our departments a little further with Commissioner Fiedler being here. So Marla, if you think that that would be an efficient um, pairing, that would be fine with me. I think it does. It, it, it aligns with our, our goals and objectives for our organization and the, the plan is to give quarterly reports to the to the commissioners so you guys will start getting one in March and we you can even do monthly reports with the next steps and phases so yes okay. 
So we do two board members, Michael, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I'm, I'm happy to fill one of those seats and perhaps Marla take take the other seat. That sounds, sounds good. good. All Thank right, you I'll, very much. Um, I'll just make a formal motion. Go ahead and do that. <laughs> I move to a, a, a point. Uh, the continuation of Commissioner Marcella and Marla Ackridge from the EDC onto the SCED board as representation for Lake County. I'll second. All right, any further discussion? None for, none me. for me. All right, hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Great. Well, thanks, Michael, so much for your time. And uh, thank you, Marla and Commissioner Marcella for your continued work on all of this. Um, it's a, it's a very important time <laughs> to, to get all of this organized. So looking forward to it. Thank you. And I'll put the post for the survey and also, um, send a link to the commissioners as well. So I really appreciate it. It takes about 10 minutes. So, um, when you have a moment, I know you're very busy. So thank you in advance for taking that survey. Absolutely. No, thanks for, thanks for sharing that with us. We'll look for that in our, in our inbox. Thanks for coming today, Michael. All right, um, let's see. So next on our agenda, uh, let me double check that we have no further discussion on SCED from the commissioners. Sorry, I'm going back and forth between applications here. None for me today. All right. None for me, that's good. Okay, great. Uh, next on our agenda, we have the Hope More Mine update from our January 20th regular meeting. Um, I see Michael Irwin on here, and unless he has something additional, um, I think the only update that Public Works had um, informed me of to share with the board was that Public Works had, um, had plowed the road that uh, the property owner had plowed uh, prior to Public Works getting out there. Um, this is both for, you know, being sure that we're, we're plowing per our, our specs and um, also to protect uh, the road as, the as, an, as an asset um, and dealing with any drainage issues. So um, the road has since been plowed from Public Works. Um, there's access up the road. And, and Michael, I don't know if you have any comments perhaps on um, plans to look at the road and do some more improvements because of the increased activity um, through the spring and summertime? Um, I was up there this morning and it looks to be in very good condition. Um, there was about two inches of new snow up there. Um, so people are able, are able to cross country ski and do stuff alongside the road. Um, I think we'll leave it like that unless, you know, they the hope more guys request more, you know, more snow removed. Um, other than that, they're parking up there and they're doing recreation. So that's a good thing. Okay. All right, any any questions for Michael on uh, on the status of the the road and the plowing up there on 1A? No, thank you, Michael. No, uh, thank you. All right, okay, thanks. Sarah, you, you hit, you're on mute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Next on our agenda, we have the renewal of the Tennessee Pass Cookhouse liquor license. Um, the clerk brings these to us. We have in our packet, um, it looks like a permit or the license has been paid for. And uh, Patty, do we have any, um, any feedback or reason, uh, cause for concern on renewing the license for the Tennessee Pass Cookhouse. You are currently muted. You have to press star six. You are still muted. Not sure if we have technical difficulty there, Patty. Um, but I, 
I'm sure Patty would usually bring us any kind of concern. Um, typically there is none and I'm, I'm sure that uh, this is a similar case. Patty, are you able to unmute or put a comment in the chat? Okay. Not having seen any concerns come from Patty uh, on the renewal of the liquor license for Tennessee Pass Cookhouse, I will entertain um, a motion. Sorry, slow on the mute button there. Uh, I move that we approve the renewal of the Tennessee Pass Cookhouse liquor license. I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, any further discussion? Again, we have our, our, our payment in our packet and everything looks to be up to date. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, aye. 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 All right, great. Thank you both. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, next on our agenda, we have the Crossroads Trail change order consideration totaling 1,700. Um, so this is the trail that is planned to go under the overpass, the CDOT overpass out by Hayden Pond. It is a um, small connector in that Hayden Pond recreation area over to County Road 10, um, providing a safe off-grade crossing of the highway and potential um, overflow parking um, with the increased um, visitation that we're seeing and popularity of that area. Um, so we had authorized um, our project manager with Conlin Associates to engage with Centennial, um, Centennial Archaeology to do some of the um, cultural and historical resource assessment of the area as required by CDOT. Um, and they needed to uh, add a little bit of work to that scope based on some feedback from CDOT, Colorado Department of Transportation, um, which increased the cost $1,700. So I bring this to the board um, for formal approval um, to complete that work and uh, move along with the permitting process with CDOT. Any questions? Uh, none for me, that seems pretty clear and so you just keep moving that project along. It's a great you know, addition and connection to some existing sort of county recreation and public access facilities. So seems good. I have no questions on that either. It's pretty straightforward to me. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, it's, it's uh, this, this engagement fulfills the permitting requirements of section 106. Um, mm -hmm of the National Historic Preservation Act and the Colorado Historic Register Act um, as, as required by um, CDOT as a regulatory agency um, and their role. So um, that'll be great. Um, I will entertain a motion for the approval of the change order um, regarding Centennial Archaeology um, site assessment work for the Crossroads Trail in the amount of one thousand seven hundred dollars. So moved. Second. All right. Any further discussion? I I will just say that on uh, we have invited um, Mike Conlon to join us on February eleventh for a overall update on the project uh, and informational. Um, sharing of status. So we'll hear more on um, the project status on February 11th in the afternoon. Um, also board, I, I did uh, get, I was contacted by Howard Tritz as uh, representative of the Mineral Belt Trail Committee. Um, and he was, uh, he would like to ask us uh, for support or any feedback on a proposal that he has for safety improvements along the Mineral Belt Trail. Um, so he may also join us there for um, maybe a 20, 30 minute conversation um, once we, if, if, if the board would allow him to, to join us on that day as well. 
thought that would be a good uh, dovetail. And he could also get Conlon in there as Conlon was pretty instrumental in um, the construction of the Mineral Belt Trail. Awesome. Okay. Hearing no further comment on the motion on the table to approve the change order. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you so much for, for uh, looking at that, helping us move that along. And next on our agenda is, how do you pronounce that, Jeff? Is that Uinta? I don't know. <laughs> It's a different state, so we show can my it, ignorance but... there. Dang it! All right. Uh... Um, yeah, so maybe I'll, I'll just introduce this. So um, first of all, say that the, the draft comments. Um, that, so quick background. Um, this is a new railway construction being constructed in Utah to connect um, potential oil fields to the main rail line, existing rail line that, that um, cuts through Colorado. Uh, through Eagle County and connects to the Moffett Tunnel. Um, so uh, the comments are to the Surface Transportation Board, which has to approve new rail construction. Um, the comments have been uh, prepared under um, attorney-client protection, so we, we can't introduce the full draft of the comments here, but we can sort of give an overview of them. They've been produced um, for um, uh, entities in Eagle County, um, and, and we just don't have the sort of right <laughs> or ability to use the full, full comments. Um, the Lake County interest in this is that the current draft of the environmental impact statement did not include downline impacts on the Tennessee Pass line through Lake County. It only included the downline impacts through Eagle and on down, you know, that main line uh, sort of east. Um, so the substantive point that we would like to introduce into those comments um, and, 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 and or, you know, the, the, the reason why we want to consider joining these comments, we've been invited to join um, by your county entities, is to get that analysis done in the environmental impact statement of the potential impacts um, if there were to be through freight from these oil fields. <laughs> through Lake County and the Arkansas River watershed. Um, so to be clear, at, at least as, as far as we have seen, the comments don't weigh in one way or the other on bigger picture issues of the Tennessee Pass line. Um, it's really just the narrow question of getting that analysis done of the downline environmental safety operational consideration. So I think it's you know definitely in our interest. Um, it's not costing Lake County anything. Uh, to join these comments um, and the analysis itself will be done you know by the Utah railroad proponents um, for you know the environmental impact while well, it'll be done by the federal government uh, on the environmental impact statement so um, I think the right way I mean, I, mean, I think the right way to proceed um, we don't have you know when, when those draft comments come in they will need to be signed off on before our next, um, official BOCC meeting. So I think the right way to proceed is just to, you know, give a, give approval here to join, you know, um, as long as we, you know, stay within that mandate of just getting that um, a comment in to widen the scope of the EIS. Um, if new issues are introduced in the comments, you know, then I think we'll have to come back for a full, you know, additional review, but I guess, it, 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 I think this is the appropriate way to proceed that the three of us can agree to join, um, you know, as long as it stays within the agreed, you know, mandate of approving. Yeah, I, I agree, Jeff. I think um, just, to, just to further support your comments, um, it seems that a lot of, you know, I mean, this, this could create an efficiency and insight um, that could help us reviewing, you know, any any further proposals, and uh, it's not um, it's typical now. I think that that agencies are trying to include broader regions of this environmental analysis um, because it is such a cumbersome and long process, or it can be. Um, and so I'm I'm in complete favor of extending that down 
um, through the Arkansas Valley. Absolutely. Thanks for thanks for bringing this to us. Yeah, maybe I should. I mean, I think I said this at the beginning of the meeting, but just reiterate that the broader Lake County, you know, interests. You know, there there are other processes. Um, you know, interacting with the new leaseholder on the Tennessee Pass line to get our broader concerns in. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. No. So, so I think the motion I would well the motion I would make. Uh, <laughs> is that uh, Lake County uh, BSCC uh, join those comments uh, uh, to submit to the Surface Transportation Board uh, as long as they remain uh, you know, within the agreed scope here of um, asking that the EIS uh, expand the geographic scope to include the Tennessee Pass downline impacts. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No, none for me. Um, thanks, Commissioner Fiedler, for your work on this. I really appreciate the attention to detail um, and the information very much. Well, thank you. And also, I mean, just I, I wanted to thank uh, surrounding and neighboring counties for being, you know, really great collaboration uh, in uh, both getting this work done, just in these comments, and then, um, you know, in, in inviting us to weigh in and join so absolutely all right if there are no other uh if there's no other discussion on the motion uh to join the surrounding counties on the um public comment letter uh all those in favor aye aye, aye. okay very good thank you so much and let me pull up my agenda. All right, and let's see, almost perfect timing here. Great, last on our agenda, um, we have the county manager planning conversation with our DOLA rep, Christy Dune. Hello. And hello. <laughs> Hi. That was like perfect timing, I just got on. Very good. All right, Christy, well, welcome, uh, welcome to our new Lake County Board. I'm not sure if you've gotten a chance to meet Jeff yet. I'm sure you have through other avenues. Perhaps. I have not. I have oh, right. Not. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. Commissioner yeah. Fiedler. I'm embarrassed to say I just discovered an email to you, Christy, in my draft uh, email box introducing myself. Um, not so. a problem. Uh, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All good. All right, well, we've, we've asked Christy to join us uh, because again, we are uh, pursuing the uh, creation of the position of county manager. Um, and um, DOLA has been an incredible continued partner uh, and we've gotten funding over the next three years to match that salary um, to be sure that we are collaborating and, and working about, together to make this work. Um, so Christy, we uh, asked you here so that we can uh, kind of start the conversation and figure out what the expectations and the process is um, between Lake County and DOLA and uh, to hear any insight that you might have um, from, from having worked through this, um, this opportunity with other counties. Sure. So first, I'm really excited that we were successful in getting this grant. I've um, been working with Lake County for a number of years now, and I think that it's just just such a great opportunity for you guys to move into the next step um, of your professional development. So the um, contract has been executed, so we are good to go, good, ready to start. Um, so I, I think I put in an email and Commissioner Fielder, I don't know that you were on the email because I don't think that you had been sworn in yet. So just kind of to, to fill you in a little bit. Um, if you're not familiar with DOLA, you know, we provide ten financial and technical assistance to local governments. And in this particular instance, we're here to, to provide both. Um, so you have a grant from us, which is great that you'll be matching. So it's a three-year grant. The first year we're paying 75% of salary and benefits, counties 25, then 50-50, then 25-75. So it, it works out to 50-50 total. Um, as a technical resource, I'm here to help in whatever way I possibly can. So if there is um, 
a need for me to review a job description or just look over compensation. You, you all have, you all know what you need and you know what you're willing and ready and able to pay, but I can just be a second set of eyes to help with that or, or just kind of talk through what that looks like. We've spent some time over the last few years just thinking about organizationally, what changes does it make to the organization to have a county manager? So the commissioners are not going to be the ones doing the day-to-day -day work anymore. You guys can focus on that policy um, for the county and you don't have to, you know, busy yourself with some of the other paperwork and kind of day-to-day -day items that, that a county manager can take on. So I think we've really set the stage and set the county up for a successful transition into a new organizational structure. Um, so uh, I can, um, like I said, assist with the um, job description. If we want to bounce ideas off of like what other counties have their county manager do, we can do that. Um, I'm here to help, you know, push out um, the advertising for the county manager. I don't know if you all have discussed whether you not whether or not you want it to be kind of local or if you want to hire a professional um, firm to actually help you do the the recruitment of that manager. Um, I am here to help form questions, set up interview processes, be part of the interview um, process with you all. Um, talk through what it, you know, negotiating that kind of thing. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not making any sort of decisions for you. I'm here just for you to bounce ideas off of. Um, because we're paying for, you know, part of the salary and benefits, we do have a vested interest in making sure that you can find someone who is professional, who can work within your organization. We've unfortunately had some manager grants um, that didn't work out very well. So the community's kind of you know, slid backwards. And so we're hoping that, you know, if the DOLA regional manager is more involved in that, we can, we can kind of help find someone who would be a good fit for your organization and bring that professionalism um, to the position as well. So yeah, I'm happy to answer questions, happy to wherever you guys are in the process to kind of either jump in, step back, you know, whatever you need from me. Yeah, Christy, I uh, I think we really appreciate that, and and it's it's going to be really important to the success of this role that Dola is a part of this, as uh, Commissioner Marcella has often commented as well. So that it's uh, as as uh, uh, well, so that it's least political, I suppose. <laughs> but I think I think through our experience through the pandemic and COVID, um, it's it's kind of highlighted. Um, something that I think Commissioner Marcel and I both uh, identified early on in, in the service of our terms um, that there was, you know, really a, um, a disservice to the community and to the organization in how we were, uh, how the commissioner roles um, are currently set up. And so, um, I think I think we definitely uh, hope that you'll be a part of that interviewing process. And um, we have talked about recruitment, not just for this position, but in general, um, and how to best go about that as a county. And so do you have any insight from experience um, working with other counties on this and any direction to help us uh, look into. We have not, we've, we've worked on some thoughts to incorporate into a job description, but we have not nailed that down yet. Um, I think that recruitment process uh, is something we need to do in tandem with getting that job description. Have you but, thought uh, about whether or not you want to hire an actual firm to do the recruiting, like a national recruitment process? Because to be honest with you, the ones who I've worked with so far have been really small towns, the South Fork, Swatch, you know, they weren't looking for at a national level. Um, they're just so small that they didn't put that much recruitment effort in to the process, which is fine. They, you know, they still ended up with some good people. Um, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I think that, you know, then we have to think about how I mean, there's obviously a large cost that's associated with that, although the value in it, um, you know, should be ongoing and um, 
and and pay for itself in the long run. Um, we haven't talked about that, but I'd be happy to hear my fellow commissioners, uh, you know, thoughts on there. I think um, I, I would certainly like to do, you know, a bit more than than posting in the local paper, <laughs> um, and maybe maybe uh, working with, um, uh, you know, our our HR. Um, consulting firm that we are currently engaged with and or another firm or two and, and seeing how we can kind of amplify. Um, and I'm, are you members of NACO? I'm not that familiar with that organization, yeah. but I don't know if they do recruitment, just similar to, mm -hmm. you know, ICMA. So that might be something to at least get it out at a national level. It might be less expensive than actually hiring a firm. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good question. I know, um, I know we were members last year, and I think we intend to remain members. Yeah, we still we're still members. I'm on uh, the Economic Development and Workforce Steering Committee with NACO, so we are still members there. I personally would not be um, opposed to hiring a third party consulting firm to help us with that recruitment. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Uh, I, I think because it removes any kind of preconceived notion about any bias that we might have towards any candidate, it casts a very wide net. And I think in order for this to really be successful here, we really need to engage with, um, with someone that has done this before and, and recruit talent that is not walking into this as their first time as a county manager. Um, because I think that in itself could be disastrous if it's a, a first time county manager and this is our first time implementing that organizational structure. And so I think in order for us to really find and retain and, and recruit that talent, um, we need somebody professional and that has the time and dedication to do that for us. And I, I think the expense, in my opinion, would be well worth it, um, you know, because if you're, if you're gonna get a top notch candidate um, you know, I think of those, those counties like Clear Creek County or, you know, that, that have done that type of recruitment, it's been very successful for them. I'll, I'll, I'll weigh in. I, Commissioner Marcel, I really agree with, with your point. I, I haven't seen like the price tag on that national cert. So, you know, obviously we, we, you know, we need to see that and approve it. Um, and yeah. Uh, you know, see what that is, but but I mean, certainly agree with the goal of getting that sort of national word out. Um, uh, and yeah, and Kayla I really agree with everything you said about really trying to get in someone with good previous professional experience in a role like this. Uh, and also, I think your point about you know not having our own preconceived notion about like where to you know what what kind of person to go to get that. Um, I mean, I certainly don't have personal experience or like a professional network in that realm. So it'd be really valuable to do everything we can to get the word out. And uh, sorry, uh, someone's banging on my door. Um, and also if, uh, uh, if I could add, I mean, Christy, back to your original point. I mean, I, 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 I love any guidance from you or sort of good experiences about you know, having not had a county manager in the county before, you know, and we and we've talked a fair amount about this um, amongst ourselves and also with the with the directors. But you know, it's going to be a change in like reporting lines and information flow. So any, you know, if if there's some off the shelf good guidance about how to make that transition work smoothly, that would be super helpful for us. Yeah, I I agree, Christy. I think that would be really helpful for us. You know. Um, I think when we've had conversations with uh, with our, our department directors and elected officials, the idea is, is really for us to be able to put in place a, a continuity of operations um, that maintains itself. You know, the board changes over frequently and, and roles change and, and department managing commissioners change, which I think that that's kind of a, a very little known fact is that in our community, um, you know, you you elect a county commissioner on the 
the premise that they're going to represent you and represent your district and, and not necessarily that they're going to manage departments internally, which takes up the bulk of our time. And so um, I think that's gonna be pretty important for us to convey internally and externally because that manager is gonna take the policy recommendations that we develop as a board and translate those into actionable items with department directors and their staff. And so I, I think what I'd like to see through maybe that, that recruitment process, that public recruitment process and professional recruitment process is however that happens, making, I don't know if there's a requirement for it to be a public process where the public is involved in that process or how that typically works. And I don't know if you can elaborate on that for us at all, um, but definitely making that process open to the public so that they can also be a part of that selection, I guess. Sure, there's, there's a, that's a good question. And, and there is generally um, an opportunity for the public to get to know the, at least the top three candidates. Um, if you all decided that you wanted to have um, a citizen interview panel, that would completely be your decision. I generally, I've sat on an um, interview or setting on interview processes where there's one with the elected officials, there's one with the department heads. Um, and then there, I don't think I've ever seen one where there's a citizen panel, but maybe it was more like a advisory, like people who were on advisory panels um, for the community. So, but I've definitely seen it where there's, a, you know, an opportunity for people to get to know the candidates, whether it's a reception type um events in the evening because um, you would want to have an opportunity, especially if you're looking at people at a national level, if somebody's coming in from another state, you'd want to have an opportunity to show them around town, around the county, um, give them a really good visual of the place where they may be moving to. So incorporating an opportunity for, for um, citizens to, to get to know them is definitely part of that. Obviously, you are the hiring body. So, you know, you would take the information that you get from your department heads and, and your other interview panelists and use that to make um, your decision as well. And I think that, you know, as you, as we all are, are thinking about this process and what's important to you, um, start writing down questions that you would want to ask or information that you'd want to get from, from your top um, candidates. So, putting it out there that this is practically a first time position for Lake County and how would, you know, a prospective candidate kind of approach the position? What kind of tools do they have that they're using that would allow them to kind of bring in the department heads, bring in the citizens who maybe are not um, used to having that, that level of not in access to you as commissioners, but just having someone there who is going to help kind of steer the boat a little bit. But I think that's important. That's an important question to be asking and making sure that any candidate that you have um, is really thinking about the type of organization that they're they're looking at. That makes a lot of sense, Chris. Since you're on the on the call with us today, if if we were to decide that we wanted to look for a professional firm to help us with some of the recruitment pieces, would we develop an RFP for that? You certainly could um, do it that way. Or, you know, if you wanted to perhaps expedite it a little more, um, you could probably reach out to find out what firms are providing executive level recruitment um, in Colorado. Um, of course, under the current procurement policy, uh, I expect their compensation would exceed the $5,000 threshold. Um, so you may likely need to perhaps do both where you go in and proceed with preparing the RFP. And then also in the meantime, try to figure out what firms are out there um, to provide these types of services. Christy, do you have a list of, of firms that have been utilized by other counties? Or would CCI have that have that information? Potentially. I don't have one that's formal. I could 
I could ask around to the other regional managers and see who's um, who they use. I think McKinstry is that, I think they are in Colorado. Um, I think with a little, a little time and thought, I could probably put together a short list. You uh, looking and asking Eagle County for any uh, recruitment efforts and consulting Cura, C-U-R-A was uh, brought up and suggested. Did you, what, what was the name of the firm you just said, Christy? McKinstry. McKinstry, okay. Okay. Um, and then, so through the recruitment, I suppose then we need to, as a board, we need to figure out what our job description looks like and then um, get out, you know, go through the procurement of a recruitment um, firm. Um, and at that point, then kind of loop you in on what that, what that timeline and process uh, might look like. And we can include you on those conversations of um, kind of what the engagement and agreement looks like with the recruitment. Christy, does that sound about right? <laughs> Sorry, yes, it does. Okay. I, was, I was trying to Google McKinstry so that I could put the link in the chat box, but yes, <laughs> um, that sounds great. Um, commissioners, any other questions for Christy at this time? Mm, not for me. Right. I think that was great. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have any any questions at this point either. Thank you, Christy and Dola, for uh, helping us and investing in us to to make this organizational change. It's definitely going to be a big change for us. Um, but it's definitely something that's very needed so that there's not a lapse in services to our constituents um, as our boards change over. Um, and it allows us to be a better player at the state. So we're not um, on the menu, we're reading the menu, <laughs> which will be really nice for us. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a great step forward for you all. And I will look commissioners to see if there's a transitioning to a professional manager, like best practices. I'll I'll dig through some ICMA um, libraries to see if there's something like that. I haven't seen anything, but it sounds like something that actually would be a benefit for a lot of organizations. So I'll see what I can find and send that out to you all. Awesome. Can we maybe set a time to have a work session with you like mid-March then to check in with, with where we're at with this? Yeah, Does that, that sounds, yep, that sounds great. Do you have a uh, regularly scheduled one you want me to put on my calendar now or? Uh, the second week, second or fourth Tuesdays of the month are our regular work sessions. That would be March 9th um, yeah. or March 23rd. So do you wanna maybe aim to check in on the 9th? I think that sounds good. Okay, excellent. Yeah, and I'd just like to chime in too. Um, Commissioner Marcella mentioned the, you know, not a lapse in, in service, but I, I think on top of that too, which we have been working um, pretty hard to kind of steer the ship a bit on how we prioritize, you know, the budget and then some tr strategic long-term planning. Um, you know, I think we've done, we've done some good legwork on kind of shifting um, how we approach those things in the county. And uh, I think above, you know, one of, the one of the really important things is that consistency in strategic planning and continuing support that makes sense for our economic um, well-being, especially given climax and now, of course, COVID on top of all of that. <laughs> um, so I think the investment of, you know, of, 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 planning and um, projects uh, is just something that we, you know, can't, can't afford to have that kind of lapse or be suspended um, 
at this time. And I think that this position is going to really help the county to, to keep those um, strategies in place and, and moving forward. Sure. Well, for what it's worth, I think you handled yourselves in COVID in 2020 remarkably well <laughs> with all of the stuff that's going on. So um, this is a positive step forward, but you all did a really good job keeping things moving. So Excellent. thank you. All right. Well, I have the ninth on my calendar. I just kind of blocked out all day. So let me know um, okay. when to. Okay. We'll probably yeah. usually do <laughs> the afternoons, but we'll, we'll send you an official, uh, uh, officially scheduled uh, time slot there and Zoom info for that. But Sounds thanks. wonderful. All right. Hey, thanks, anyhow. guys. Have a good afternoon. Yeah, you too, Christy. Thanks. Thank you, Christy. You bet. All right. Anything else, commissioners, on uh, on the, the county position at the time? Do we want to kind of set a time and pull out the calendar again? <clears throat> We look at our second work session in February to potentially talk through um, and maybe finalize or get to a point close to finalizing a job description um, on the 23rd. Well, actually the 23rd, I think we've proposed perhaps a land, building and land use work session, but um, what kind of timing works for, for you all? I'm sorry, the question goes to my, to Commissioner Marcella and Fiedler. Um, I know there's kind of a lot, we're kind of like jumping in feet first, uh, on getting through a lot of things pretty swiftly here. So I feel like our February is already pretty full. Yeah, it, it's looking that way. Um, I wonder, Sarah, if it would be helpful though, if, if we had some of that legwork um, kind of done going into a work session. So I think Jeff has, has jotted down some thoughts from his experience on the school board um, with a county management or with a management structure similar to that. Um, and then I'm wondering if it would be helpful if um, you wanted me to do some of that background work of, of looking into um, recruitment firms and potential costs or asking surrounding counties what they had done to be successful in that and then trying to put together an RFP for that. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I think we can do that. Um, yeah, that sounds great. If you have the bandwidth for that, Kayla. I, yeah, I do. I have a, I have a template, an RFP template um, that Katie Welter worked on um, that I can, can use and send over to her just to see if I've incorporated everything appropriately. Um, and I'll do some research and see what I can come up with. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, I guess we'll start with that. Um, Mr. Fiedler, we're working on some job description elements. Um, I think it'd be helpful, like Christy mentioned, for us to come up with questions to any kind of potential applicant and of course, kind of flesh out more what our hopes would be for um, the responsibility and role of the position. So why don't we aim to um, share that with each other over the next couple of weeks and uh, continue this conversation on when to schedule the follow-up meeting. Okay. To nail down any of that or talk through any options on recruitment and RFQ or P and job description. That sounds okay. good? Yeah, Great. I think so. Okay, excellent. Um, well, let's see, next on the agenda, let me pull it up, I think we have minutes. <clears throat> okay, that's in it for business. We have minutes of special meeting held January 15th, um, of the regular meeting held January 20th, special meeting held January 26th, and special meeting held January 28th. Um, I have a few 
just notes on that. Let's pull up. Um, all right, on, see, I can share my screen. All right, so the first is, yeah, January 15th. Um, I just wanted to be sure that our motion coming out of executive session was um, accurate and adequate because um, I think there might have been just a couple of pieces missing um, there. Uh, to file a claim for the performance bond posted by Peak 360. Uh, I didn't know if adding uh, and then identifying the fire station two project. I think I, I think that's what our, I wrote it down verbatim, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> including some of those details may be um, important. Yeah, I think as um, if you, if we can just ask Patty to listen to that recording and make sure that that, um, is verbatim in there that'd be great okay yeah i think i think it was just to file the claim against the performance bond posted by 360 peak 360 um on the fire station 2 project so just a couple a couple more items in there other than that i don't have comments on this january or january 15th minutes do you all no okay um, and moving down to January 20th. Um, you're just acknowledging the city's work on the short-term rent cap. Let's see, and then adding Jamie's for public comment, Jamie Cipher, which I've spelled without a second F in here, but adding the um, full name of the public uh, participant. Um, and then I think it's important to just say here, you know, our conversation over the landfill fees was to cover um, it, it, for, for a few reasons. And the, you know, above all, it was because we, we can't cover our operation and maintenance, the O&M of the landfill currently. Um, and then in, in the pre pre preparation, um, as noted here, in the cost of adding a new cell and or what other regulations uh, or requirements, I should say, will be um, uh, mandated through CDPG. Um, let's see. Um, I thought down here on the tower, it's it's not that we have to build this tower, but through the agreement of the state, um, continuing the to provide the financial support, um, well, and operating, maintaining the tower, um, the county agrees to the role of constructing the tower. So maybe changing that word of us having to build the tower. Other than that, I don't have any other comments on the meeting on the 20th, was it? Yep. I think, um, those, for, are, I think those are good for me, Sarah. Okay. Commissioner Fiedler, do you have any additions or changes? No, that sounds good. And thanks for being so careful with this. I'll step up my game on reviewing minutes. No worries. All right. Um, no, this was still the 20th. Um, and then on January 26th, um, um, I think I think this might be to assess, not access, the condition of the modulars. Um, 
And and the issue before the board was to wait. Do we wait for the performance bond um, to progress, or do we move forward um, on the completion of the project, um, regardless of the status of the bond? Um, if we could make that language a bit better there, I think that would be helpful for our purposes. But other than that, I don't think I have other comments on these this set of minutes. I don't have any on that either. Okay. Um, January 28th. Um, just an additional consideration for the RFP, um, or not for the RFP, but just on the tower in general. Um, we we also noted that we don't, we needed to, um, in order to move forward in receiving and reviewing the proposals that we might receive from the RFP, um, we also need to submit a um, application, I'm sorry, for Excel um, to get a, uh, a set determination on what that demand, what that energy demand from the tower will be, and then what um, access or improvements might need to go to the site. Um, uh, I think that, that that cost is one that we really don't have yet, but I, ha I did in this meeting here, I um, said that I would connect Josh with Peter Schmidt um, from Excel, which I have done. And Josh is going to get the, the specs from the state on, on the, the tower project. And then we as a county um, are an applicant to Excel and we need to submit for a request to have an assessment of the site done um, just to put it in the queue and kind of dedicate Excel staff to uh, reviewing um, the proposal and the project. And once we get that in the queue on Excel, we'll then be able to get some better figures on what's necessary um, of the infrastructure there. And I think this is a, it, I don't know what's up there, but I do think that this could be a huge wild card. Um, and so I, I would feel a lot better. And we, we did discuss this in the 28th meeting of knowing exactly what that number is for utilities, um, you know, before, before then awarding any kind of, uh, or as we are, you know, going through the RFP, um, the proposals that we might get. I just wanted to add that into the minutes to be sure that we covered covered that kind of outline question. And I have nothing else. I see nodding. Okay, and then this is the, all right. And uh, that should be it for the minutes that we have listed. And I can send this, I'll send this uh, file with my comments to you all and to Patty. Great. Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Um, sorry, I'm trying to pull up. Oh, I just have to stop sharing. That's why it's okay. All right. Uh, and with that, then, um, with some of those corrections and additions, um, I will entertain a motion for the approval of special meeting held January 15th, 2021, the regular meeting held January 20th, 2021, the special meeting held January 26th, 2021, and the special meeting held January 28th, 2021. Sorry, did, did, did you move and looking for a second or are you looking for an original motion? Sorry, it's, it's okay. I, I, uh, just a original motion. Uh, I'll move to approve uh, all those minutes that you just listed and that are in the packet. Okay, great. Second. All right. Any further discussion? None for me. No, thank you. All right. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And then last, we have bills and payroll for pay period ending January 29th, 2021. And I'll entertain a motion to approve the bills and payroll for pay period ending January 29th, 2021. So moved. Second. Okay, great. Uh, any hearing no further comment? No. All those in favor? 
Aye. 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 All right, great. And that concludes our first meeting of February. <laughs> uh, does the board have anything else to discuss before we adjourn? No. No. Sounds all, right. all good for me. Yep. Okay, great. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for your participation. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a Thank good you. rest of your day. Take care.